Empire survivors again. Enjoy the first like seven minutes when the bitrate is actually um, acceptable. Gets a little Vaseline esque later, gets a little muddy later. Did he get banned or timed out? Listen, he got um, timed out for 10 minutes and then he probably left. <laughs> Which is like, we'll call, that a, we'll call that a soft ban. Hey, NL, did you see the post about some guy who posted a job ad saying they will pay $3 an hour to interact with the chat? No, I did not see that, but I did see you type it every 45 seconds for two hours during the Fall Guys segment. So I'm just even more confused. This is like being spammed about something that I did not see over and over. And now, like, I don't know. Are you going to try to link me to it? I don't, maybe he got the job. I don't even know who he is. I don't know who the guy... I don't know whose chat it is. I don't know if it's related to my chat. But you, you type the message 500 times. There's no context in it at all. Did you see the post about the guy? Who, who are these people? I need help. I need you to meet me halfway if you want me to give you a comment that makes any sense. I don't understand the post, the post about the guy in the chat. It's too general, man. Okay, anyway, start me up. We have 389 gold. That's not a lot. Let me be, um, you know what? Let's just play a little Imelda. Her name was Zelda. Is there a way to see what levels I have not beaten, by the way? Because I know have beaten, have beaten, have not beaten. I don't think I've beaten Dairy Plant yet. I've definitely not beaten Moon Golo or Ilmolis, Il or Green Acres, or the Bone Zone. You can see for each character. Whatever. Dude, I know we gotta go back to the dairy plant, to the, birth pl the birthplace of Milk Magic. Gives plus three revivals. Consuming a revival gives 10% max health, one armor, and plus 5% might, area, duration, and speed. That seems good. Yeah, let's take that. <laughs> that seems... What? This is too many enemies, dude! Holy cow. Um, let's not get knife. Let's stick with magic wand. That's literally the best one. Let's go. I'm insane. I'm, I'm still stunned at all the stuff they've added to Vampire Survivors. I remember literally playing this in, like, March and being like, what can they do? What can they do to make it so you're not just walking around, like, in a line? What the heck is Banish, man? Give me some... Give me some... Garlic. Well, it turns out I still don't know what they can do. Because I don't even know what they did. There's just so much stuff going on. Banish makes it so it never shows up again. Okay, okay. <clears throat> give me some Garlic. I want to ban the bird so it never shows up again. Are you still playing Marvel Snap? Yes, I actually I played uh, played a little Marvel Snap this weekend. I stole a deck from a Twitter follower that basically um, relies on playing a card on your final turn that moves all of your other cards. So people like 100% of the time they look like they're winning. And then they snap into you. And then you just play this card that moves everything one space to the left. And they lose. And you didn't even have to snap. And yet you get the power of, of their snap. It feels great. It's a lot of fun. I have reached the point where like... The first couple of days playing it, I was like, holy cow. I'm unlocking like 20 new cards a day. Now I'm unlocking like half of a card a day. And I'm like, the progress is a little slower. I think I'm in pool two now as well. So it's even slower, but um, I'm still having a good time. It's just like, Sips was talking to me, he said it's the perfect dad game. He's absolutely right. The games are like three minutes long. 
It's the perfect length. If Rumbleverse games were only three minutes long, I would still be playing Rumbleverse. Because even when you... And, and also, I think they... I, don't, I can't speak to the actual mechanics of the game. Like, is it mechanically, like, that interesting of a game? I think it's kind of interesting. You know, it's got some bluff mechanics, which are neat. It's got some RNG, which annoys people, but it's also, like, you know, I find it fun because I'm not that much of a stickler for, like, card game purity, I guess. But the big thing about it is that, like, the games are so fast and resigning causes you to get, like, half the penalty that you would normally get for a loss. So whenever I, like, win a game, I'm like, I'm a genius. Whenever it looks like I'm going to lose a game, I'm like, oh, no. I resign. There you go. Enjoy your one cube. Like, they, they snap into me. I, I could be winning. If someone snaps into me, there's like a 75% chance I'm like, take your cube. Go ahead, take your cube. I have no pride in that game whatsoever. I always snap a snap. That's a young man's game. I don't snap a snap. You can't triple stamp a double stamp either. Coward strats? Yeah, I don't care. Who cares? I, I, and honestly, like, they're so annoying. Sometimes you'll play somebody, they've always got, like, the Spider-Man avatar. And then they, as soon as the game starts, they snap. And then they go, they spam the emote. Snap! Snap! You! Snap! I'm losing! Snap! Snap! Enjoy your one cube. I just resigned on you. If you snap every game, they shouldn't call the game Marvel Snap anymore. They should call it Marvel Snapped. OMG, it's me. So annoying. Very band kid energy, man. Just take a more magic wand, please. The game is in the running for the worst UX. I mean, on the on the phone, it's fine. But I will say on the PC, like last night, I was like, oh, I'm finally done with like baby duty and stuff. Let me sit down and uh, play a little Marvel Snap on, on Steam. And uh, when I tried to do it, you know, you get King Bible. I could not even play with the deck that I'd been using on my phone because I can't snap or I, I, I can't swipe far enough to get to the deck. Like whenever I try to swipe, it, it goes to the point where I can like see the name of the deck and then I try to click on it and it's like because it just like uses your mouse as like a like a pointer device, as if it was on your phone. The PC UI is not, it's not there. Delete old ones? No, they can like make their game work on PC. I'll just keep playing it on the phone. Like that's, that's so clearly on their ends. I did see that the Vancouver Michelin Guide was released. I was, um, honestly, we eat at some good restaurants in Vancouver. Less since we've had a kid, obviously. But um, I was surprised. I've heard of a lot of the restaurants. Not all, but a lot. We've only been to one. I've only been to Fable. I was surprised at, at some of the stuff that didn't make it. Like, I would have thought that um, we don't really... You know what? I'm going to banish you. Is Sunny out? Whoa, what are the odds? There it is. <laughs> Maybe it'll be a sunny Halloween. I'm uh, I'm surprised that, um, like, Sham Bar was not on the, the Michelin star list. It's not new hotness anymore, but it's still a great restaurant. I'm... Um, I'm surprised that, like, Savio Volpe was not on the list, but I was also, like, the time for me to care about Michelin star restaurants is, like, five years in the past and 15 years in the future. It's got it. We got a little bit more time uh, to go before that's, like, relevant for me. You ever eaten at the Sandbar at Granville Island? What an insane question where the answer is yes. Yes, I have... Uh, I've eaten at the sandbar on Granville Island. <laughs> Holy cow, who would have thought? Um, yeah, and actually, so we ate there 
we walked to Granville Island like one day this summer, and then when we got there, we were like, we're hungry. We ate at the sandbar for the first time. I expected it to be like kind of junk because Granville Island is, I don't want to say it's a tourist trap because there's some great stuff there, but it's a little uneven, let's say. But I actually thought it was, it was pretty good. I did, I mean, to be fair, when we were there, I think I just had a Caesar salad and we got like fries for Kate and the baby to share. So maybe it's not like the, it's not a representative look at the quality of a restaurant, but I was like, you know what? This is a, this is a, a very decent Caesar salad for sure. What a, what a strange question. I can't believe the answer is yes. Hey, have you heard of a game called Brotato? It's basically just this, but better. Hey, have you heard of a streamer called Twitch.tv slash Northern Lion who already uh, fucking played that shit? What are you talking about? Three piece! Let's go. Also better, quotation marks. Something, I don't know. I don't know how, how many enemies I want to make. Because when people like came, when I was playing way too much Rumbleverse, some people came in and they're like, oh, why does this game look like Fortnite had a baby with Clash of Clans? I'm like, you don't understand. The mechanics are like hot. The mechanics are hot, dude. But then when uh, I play Brotato, I'm like, this game just looks like, it just looks bad. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And also the shop, like, I, I think that's my problem with Brotato, is that after every game, after every round, I should say, you have too many options. Like, I, my eyes just glaze over. I even, I watched Hafu play a little Brotato. She's great at the game. She's got a great mind for systems. But when she was in the shop, I was like, how does she keep this stuff straight in her head? She's like, oh, Flash Generator's an amazing item. I'm like, I played like five hours of this game. I couldn't tell you what Flash Generator is. You've already got it evaluated and like placed in an internal tier list. I think it's just different, different strokes for different folks. I'm a very like, I'm a, believe it or not, I'm a minimalist sort of guy. When a game gives me the choice between two things, I live for that. I'm like, thank God, two things. That's incredible. When a game gives me a choice between three things, I'm like, this is too much. Hold on, I got, ooh, look at this garlic. I would like to banish the laurel. I never want to see it ever again. It's just like life's too short, for me at least. Like whenever, you know, you play a board game and then, like, somebody's reading out their card. Or, like, I, I always go back to this, but, like, Magic is the example for me. Where, like, as soon as we hit, like, turn four, and somebody's doing, like, um, their turn takes two minutes, and they've got 17 triggers that they're using, I'm like, you know what? Turn four, I play a forest, I tap all my land, here's, like, a big wolf. That's what I got for you. If you're gonna beat me, go ahead, go ahead, beat me. That's fine. I'm here to enjoy myself. I'm just here to, like, play a game. I'm not going to debase myself and go, you know, and, yeah, and then my Niv-Mizzet causes me to, every time I take damage, I get to look at the top card in my deck and I can choose whether to keep it there or put it on the bottom. And then I fetch my pain land to get one floating red mana, which then allows me to look at my top card. Hmm, hmm, hmm. It's a, uh, it's a uh, red blue. It's a scalding tarn, but I already have a pain land out. Mm, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put that on the bottom. Then I'm gonna tap my other pain land to get uh, another floating red mana. I'm gonna go. Mm, 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 I'm gonna put that on the bottom. Oh, and then don't. Okay, did it again. Mm, that's a treasure cruise. I'm gonna use two Jace the Mind Sculptor tokens to immediately draw a card. I'm gonna use my two floating mana to play my treasure cruise. I'm gonna search through my entire deck and find seven cards and I'm gonna set them out and evaluate them one by one anyway. It's all good, like if that's what you're into or whatever. I'm more like the kind of guy who's like, hey, guess what, turn one, pass. Turn two, I play a three, two creature. Turn four, I play a three, five creature. Turn five, resign. That's how I play Magic. 
I think if I ever went back to Magic, I would have to just be a, a mono red player no matter what. Turn one, here's two damage to your face. Turn two, here's a 2-2 two -two that does two damage to you when it comes out. Turn three, here's four damage to the creature you played. Like, that's, that's what I gotta be. That's who I am. I'm a simple man. You know what I really actually realized, especially when playing more Marvel Snap? Help me. Um, spinach is always good. Let's just, let's take a spinach here. What I realized is that I really like, um, and maybe this is like Slay the Spire created this in me. I really like playing card games where I don't have to adjust my strategy at all to what my opponent is doing. There have been a lot of like wins I've had in Marvel Snap where literally I just played like the cards that I got on curve and then on my final turn play Heimdall and just move everything to the two, the, the left and the middle. And then if my opponent if my opponent puts down multiple man and then a, a carnage that and then a Wolverine, I'm like, you know what? I resign. I resign. I'm gonna go play against somebody who's just dropping uh, Kazars. Oh yes. I'm I'm playing Marvel Snap like it's PVE, and you're the E's. Summon an even multiple man. It is fun, though. It's a fun time. You consider just playing, like, Canasta? So I was singing the praises of Cribbage for a while, and then I downloaded a Cribbage app on my phone, because I was like, yo, dude, Cribbage is, like, so much fun. I was playing Cribbage against the AI for, like, an hour, and I was like, this shit actually kind of sucks. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I think it's a it's a great game if you're like camping or something like that, but if you got other options, like Dude, our luck is crazy right now, by the way. So many threes. Obviously fire wands. It's a good game. Like I would rather play like um Cribbage than like go fish or something like that. I mean if I'm being legitimate with you I would rather play cribbage than like almost any board game that requires like a 20 minute uh, Briefing in order to understand how to play it I'm getting I, I don't think it's too old. I just think my desire for that is low now whenever like we're having a board game Which we don't do because again, we have a child right now, but um, When she gets older, maybe we'll have some like board game days I don't want to teach her, like, Clank or something like that. Even though Clank is, like, pretty easy. You know what? We'll just play some, like, crazy eights. It was raining all weekend, so normally, like, I go out and I take the baby to the park and we have some... We have some fun at the park. We go on, like, the slides and stuff like that. The weather was inclement, so we stayed inside for, for much of the weekend. Um, I was like, what are we going to do? We have, like, this Sesame Street matching game. Where it's just cards with Sesame Street characters and you set it up like concentration. I was having a great time. I was like, why don't we play this shit when you get like eight adults together? Why do you always got to play some ridiculous game like Multi Nai? Where one person out of the eight knows how to play it. And everybody's favorite part of the game, of course, is the 30 minutes at the side of it where one person reads... 3,000 words of how to play the game and you have to keep all of the information in your head 100% of the time even though you've never played it. Somebody even... They, they, people... My, here's my impression of somebody reading um, board game rules. Okay, the premise of the game is that the zombie apocalypse has just happened. You can win the game by surviving the apocalypse or you can win the game by becoming a zombie and killing the last human player or infecting them. They're, everybody's on you for this. They're like, okay, I get it. That sounds simple. The game begins with the setup phase. In the setup phase, everybody gets nine cards. Nine cards gets placed, get placed in front of you. Everybody gets to choose uh, from an, a blind bag whether they get a human token or a zombie token. They also get to choose an extra job. And then, by, so there's, this is like paragraph two. By the time they get to paragraph eight, even the person reading the instructions 
doesn't they know that this shit's going on too long like they they're in the middle of a story that should have ended a while ago like and then on this and then you in, in the middle of the, the this is all true except for the engagement phase in the engagement phase anyone can play one of their one-time use interrupt tokens and then like no you're you're reading it and you're like nobody's remembering this why am i even reading it so you gotta like start playing the game and then like Every board game, they need to come with, I've seen some of them now, they come with like those YouTube videos where like you scan a QR code and it's like, here's how the game is played. That's at least an improvement. Let's go King Bible. Can we just play like Euchre or something? Either that or like, you know what? We let board games get too, too big. When I was a kid, everybody only played Monopoly. Everybody agrees that sucked, okay? But then we added, like, in, in the last 20 years, we added, like, 50 seminal board games into the ecosystem. It was too much. Catan, Catan was one thing, but now everybody's got to know how to play Sushi Go. Everybody's got to know how to play Ticket to Ride. Everybody's got to know how to play Machi Koro. Everyone's got to know how to play Puerto Rico. Everybody, every, oh, everybody's got to know how to play Splendor. Everybody's got to know how to play um, the, the Haunting of Hill House or whatever the game is called. Everybody's got to know how to play Motai Nai. Everybody's got to know how to play Tokyo Highway. Everyone's got to know how to play Clank and Dominion and Root. And the Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detectives, Evolution Climate, everyone's got to know how to play Pandemic and Pandemic Legacy. Of course, don't forget about that. Everyone's got to know how to play Dutch Blitz and Jaipur. And everybody's got to know how to play Mysterium and Captain Sonar and Dead of Winter and Hanabi. Actually, Hanabi is kind of like, that's Hanabi is a sick game. The Human League. Kill Scott Heron. Gang of Four. The, okay. The Sarah Band of Healing. Healing is doubled, recovering HP damages nearby enemies for the same amount. Or should I should I flip a card? Should I just flip a card? I know we have garlic, but like, I mean, this is good, but these could be freaking anything, man. You don't have them? Yeah, but that if I flip them, do I have them? You can only get that one. Okay. I'll take this one then. Fair enough. You have to unlock them. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense to me. What the heck is this thing? Dang old the devil dog? It seems like a great run. I wouldn't want to have bet on doubt right now, let me tell you that much. Oh baby. Oh baby. Yeah, we have a great board game collection. My wife, she she picked up all the board games that you have to have in order to be considered a real board game player. And dude, I'll tell you, some of them, Hanabi, Sushi Go, Machi Koro, Clank, right up my alley for sure. It's worth the squeeze for those. And Splendor, I forgot. I love Splendor. It's been like four years since I played it. But when I, anytime a, a, a board game gets explained to me and they're like, so uh, every round, every player gets to pick one card and whoever has the most points at the end wins. I'm like, that's it? There's no like, um, there's no rebuttal phase where you get to do a silent bid on your opponent's cards. There's no, um, there's no 500 card deck where when you draw it, it gives you a secret objective and your objective could actually be to have the least amount of points or something. It's literally just like a game you can learn in 10 minutes at most. That's what it's all about, man. Just play Sealed Magic? No, Sealed Magic is so, like, it's still very complicated. People that are in the magic bubble just don't get it because they're like, um, it's the simplest form of magic. Yeah, it makes it like one of the most complicated games that people actually choose to play in their downtime. But when I played Magic, like, pre-release and sealed, definitely my favorite formats. Draft can honestly get fucked. Sorry, I know, you're like, that's the way, that's my favorite way to play. Well, I'm sorry to tell you. That that's because you're a nerd. And that's okay. I've probably done a hundred drafts in my life. But when I was doing them, if someone said you're a nerd, I would be like, that's absolutely true. 
At the same time, if you had to pack one, pick one this, what are you taking? I'm taking the Land of War Elves. What are you taking? You're taking the rare? You're taking the rare? You're money drafting? Okay. Commander? I actually... And again, like, I hate to just do this, like, uh, this magic slander every time. But Commander is, like, um, standard if every deck was blue. At least in, I mean, I don't know what the standard ecosystem is like right now. At least in normal magic, you only have to play against blue decks when you are playing against a blue deck. Like, you only have to go up against people that go, um, and then this triggers, which allows me to get a token on this, and then I take the token off of this, which puts two tokens out here. And then I have uh, six target permanence, which means that my Sarah Angel has uh, vigilance and double strike right now. But at least you only have to deal with that with blue players. In Commander, every single deck is like that. And every you have to read every damn card. Because everybody's got a 100 card deck that's consisting of one of. It's not, it's not for, for casuals, man. It's not for casuals like me. I'm not knocking it's probably a great format if you're into magic. But when people are like, oh, if you don't like the magic ecosystem, just play Commander. Yeah, let me why don't you just like Matrix Jack like 30 years of mechanics into my brain so I can play a game of Commander in like two hours instead of ten days. Is that every I play a zero cost token. It's called Silver Pocket Watch. Okay, everybody around the table that hasn't been playing magic since 1995 now has to pick up the card and read it before anything else can happen from that point onwards. Like, it's... It's... There's... There's just... There's too much going on in Magic for new players. You know? It's it's an inhospitable environment. That's fair, but you played Magic before? Yeah, but Magic players are like, there's something different. Like, here's an, an average, a, a completely routine interaction that can happen to you at Friday Night Magic. Someone will play a card, and you'll be like, can I read that? And they'll be like, oh, you don't need to. It's just like this card that they printed in 1998, um, but it also has a kicker. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck that means, buddy. That's why I need to read the damn card. It's just like um, an Ebony Ma from the original Kaladesh set in 2001, but it also has a pain land kicker. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck that means. You're speaking a foreign language to me. That's why I need to read the damn card. Anyway, I mean, I, I stand by what I said when I was magic pilled. I think magic is like an unbelievable game. Mechanically, it's like actually one of the best design games of all time. But when you're out of it, brother, it is hard to get back in. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and it's made worse because Magic players just lie to you. And they'll say insane stuff like it's not hard to get into it. No, it's like honestly, it's very hard to get into it. I feel like at any given time, half the people that are like at any Magic event have been playing for one year and they're very excited about Magic. And half the people have been playing it for 30 years and are just like freaking steamrolling, man. You gotta get the red gems? No, they um, agglomerate, right? I do think it's a great game, though. They congeal, that's it, sorry. They congeal. It insists upon itself. I still think we're gonna win. In fact, I don't think anything can stop. Ah! Like, I think we need to, but need to is a strong word. I think for me, I thought I was like a board game guy. But really, I just like playing simple games with friends. I actually kind of, I'm learning to realize, I kind of hate board games. 
And I ne as a kid, I never thought I would say that, because as a kid, I played so much Monopoly. I played so much Clue. I played so much Scrabble and Boggle and stuff like that. And I think there's a few, like, slightly more modern games that, uh, that give me sort of, like, the same thing. Like, I would love to go to a friend's house and play, like, some Catan. I would love to go to a friend's house and play... I mean, honestly, if I went over to uh, a friend's house, even though we're in our 30s, and they were like, it's board game night, and they busted out Clue, I would be like, fucking finally. We, d we can just get right down to the game. We can have some IPAs while we play the game together. We can go, oh, when you don't think that somebody has the information and then they go, I have to give you a card. You could go, you could gaslight everybody and be like, very interesting. Instead, every board game night is like people bring eight board games. You only get to play one because there's like a two hour preamble on how to play the first game. And then when you finish that, People are like, okay, do you want to run it back? And you're like, absolutely not. That shit was miserable. And then you don't get together again for like another three months. They bring the same eight board games and you got to relearn them all every single time. So I'm like, just... Honestly, you just want to get... It's just for some social lubrication. Bring some boggle. Bring some, some 13 dead end drive or something like that. So, Hanabi is great. Like, Hanabi, Secret Hitler, Sushi Go. I would say that, like, if if you played some Catan to the point where it's second nature, sure, Catan is in there as well. Codenames, Codenames is another great example. We played Codenames with our... Uh... By the way, here's what a, a, a normal person... And this is a very normal reaction, okay? We played Codenames with um, my wife's sister's family. So my wife's sister... And her husband, two like 30 something doctors, and then their two uh, daughters, my nieces. Sorry, I'm already confusing this, but regardless. We played it with two highly. Whoa! Oh! We played it with two highly academically accomplished adults, and then two school aged kids. And I here's how I explained code names I said, so you have a grid of words. Some of these words, team one wants their players to guess. Some of these words, team two wants their player to guess. Team one and team two both have a code master. They can only say one word clues in order to try to get their team to guess as many of those words as possible. And you basically, look, there's a, there's a death word, but you basically just continue until one team finds all their words and then they win. And the, the two doctors went, huh? I don't really get it. And then we played one game and they were like, oh, I get it now. And meanwhile, every time you buy a new board game, they're printing out a 50 page manual. The initiation phase, the setup phase, what to do before the setup phase, what to do in this nightmare edge case. What if two people draw the same role? What if the, like that's too much to expect from the average person, man. Hey, when you get bored of this game, you're only going to play two times because the original instructions were too hard to read in the first place. Here's some variations you can play. It's like when they put, you know, a recipe on the back of the Ritz box. Like, can we stop putting on airs? This game is not getting played until, like, the ink wears off the cards. This game's getting played, like, two times so that whenever there's a, a discussion about board games, someone who played it once but knows that it's well-respected can be like, I love that game! That's one of my favorite games! Anyway, that's my... Would love to know your thoughts on this. I love board games, in a way! But I just, I don't know, I, I always prefer simpler mechanics, because I feel like it's not universally true. But sometimes, simple mechanics actually mean that you can have more creativity in the way you play, because you, like, you get familiar with the mechanics early, which then allows you to subvert the expectations of how to interact with those mechanics. Sometimes, sometimes. When things are so complicated, I just look at the mechanics and go, I don't know what I'm really doing with this, so I'm just going to do what seems like the best. When mechanics are simple, I'm like, they are going to think that I'm going to say, do you have any sevens? But what I'm actually going to do is say, do you have any fours?
<laughs> Go fish. Hey, anyway. Yo, AA Ron. Thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you, thank you. Just a lot of complicated games. I know, like, I, and it's not that I think that the complicated games shouldn't exist. I just think they've gone too far because, like, people will say insane stuff to you. Like, I played Root on the PC. I did a video on it, and I said, I've always heard that this is a good game, but it seems, like, a little complicated. People were like, it's actually really easy once you get into it. I'm like, really? Because my video was an hour long, and I hadn't finished the tutorial. Like, I think that's just, it's it's not like I think it shouldn't exist. It's just a little too much, like, for me, personally. I can't be busting that out at, like, a board game night. People are getting off work at, like, 5 or 6 p.m. They're coming over at 7. They want to have, like, two beers and then be home in bed at 10. We can't be busting out root. Like, that's just ridiculous. No wonder people just, like, get together and watch, like sports or game of thrones or something <laughs> go over to a i don't even watch football or base maybe baseball is a better example i don't watch baseball i feel like if i went over to a friend's house assuming i had a friend and they were watching the world series i would be like oh cool baseball if i went over and they were like hey do you want to play motai nai i'd be like oh here we go here we go it's a very it's got an 8.2 on board game geek it's part of the board game geek Top 250, it, uh, it evokes Japanese minimalism while at the same time uh, it has complicated mechanics for some reason. You've been talking about this for 20 minutes? You can't be mad because people are saying things like back in the day we used to have an attention span. Okay, we've only been talking about this for 20 minutes. Time to exercise that attention span, Grandpa. It's called a filibuster. Please, please talk about something else. Can't have it both ways. We have nine minutes, theoretically, of just picking up gold coins. What's your favorite Catan expansion? I don't like any of them. I know how it sounds. I love Catan. We played so much Catan in uh, university in my first year in the dorms that we... People were like, I can't, I can't look at Catan anymore. It makes me sick just to look at it. Here's Seafarers. Here's Cities and Knights. Let's try some new shit. I played like two games of Cities and Knights. So I was like, can we just go back to regular Catan? I just wanted like, I get that we were all sick of it, but at the same time, now we're adding in all this like new stuff that, uh, I don't know. It just seems to like, it, it, it made the experience less enjoyable for me. But you already know I could play the same game like 10,000 times based on Isaac, so what else is new? I will. I like Bang, too. That's another great game. I forgot about Bang. Bang's Goat. I do see people talking up Hanabi. Dude, I love... Hanabi is like a little slept on. The Chad Hanabi Enjoyers. I'm just walking. I'm just walking. Hanabi's a sleeper. Oh, let me guess. Here we go. It's board game night. Time to play fucking Galactic Star Cruisers. Just setting up the board takes eight hours. I gotta find... In my... 75 square foot office. I got to find a place to keep a six by six board game well preserved for the next month. Well, here's the thing. Yes, you had more power than me, but because I had um, cyber artillery and it was on a hills tile, it actually gets plus two for every single cyber artillery that I have. Meanwhile, you um, had a bad logistics train your supply train collapsed which led your units to have minus one morale so as a result come on man are you crazy i just walked over here escape skips the chest animation 
What do you? Th that's the, the whole reason I'm playing the game. Oh, you know what the most demoralizing thing is, dude? When you finally get like three hours into one of these board games, and then someone asks a question, and then you spend half an hour pouring through the rule book, and you realize you were playing that shit all wrong the whole time. Wait. What's the point of my initiative tokens if I can't use them as interrupts? Hold on, let me go check the book. Oh yeah, it turns out we could we should have been doing that the whole time. Sorry. Yeah, like when you realize you've accidentally been cheating at the board game for 45 minutes. <laughs> like oops. <laughs> Oh, I was supposed to give you my money when I bought properties. Oh! What a hilarious misunderstanding. Anyway, I do like board games. I hate to go back to Magic, but I ever, did I tell you when the shine came off Magic drafts for me? Yes, a hundred times. Okay, get ready for uh, Mr. 101. Um... When Battle for Zendikar came out, I did a draft. And uh, on pack one, everything was going fine until we got to the end of the first pack. And then someone said, hold on, there's like, I don't have a card to actually pick from. Or like, I have one more card than I should or something like that. Anyway, long story short, I had taken the full art land out of the pack because I had read online that the drafting rule was that you always take the tokens and the lands out of the pack. Turns out, Battle for Zendikar had a special case where you left the full art lands in the pack because everybody thought that shit was going to be worth a dollar each. And half the people playing the draft are playing it for fun, and half of the people playing the draft are playing it for EV. So to take a to rip a dollar out of somebody's hands in a Magic the Gathering draft is basically like, you know, causing them to get fired from their actual job. And then, like, I would have thought because we were all adults there, um, they would have been, like, no problem. But instead, nobody really said, like, oh, don't worry about it, it's an honest mistake. Instead, one of the guys was like, well, if the pack had the land in it, then I would have picked that instead of the common I took. And then we had to go through like a weird sort of tense situation where we were like, well, do you want to like try to reconstitute the packs and like run? And he's like, no, 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 it's fine, I guess. We'll just keep going. Thanks. I really appreciate it. And I just never went, I never went back to the store for one, because it was like a, I mean, it was just embarrassing. But also like, I don't know, kind of like. You know, it, it's weird going to a local game store where there's like regulars and then having like even the slightest conflict with a regular because they always know like seven other people in your draft pod and then there's like one stranger. I'm the stranger and I would just want to say to the guy like, hey, like we're both like approaching middle age here. It's a land. If you, I'll, I'll literally give you a dollar if it'll smooth this over. But instead, it's like, well, you know, I don't want to listen. It's we do this every week. I don't want to cause any problems. I'll be magnanimous about it. Sure, okay. Everybody makes mistakes. Just make sure you don't do it on the next pack. Okay, how about you um, get a life on the next pack? She drives me crazy. Everyone said we're just playing a game. He's really nice if you get to know him, though. Then again, I did. I met some nice people at, at Friday Night Magics as well. We even met people at Friday Night Magic, vetted them that they weren't crazy at a board game cafe, and then invited them to our home to play some Commander once. We never invited them again. They were nice people. The Commander was not so nice. It took forever. It took... <laughs> This shit took like four hours. I was like, I'd love to hang out with them, but I only know them from magic, and uh, I'm just gotta, I gotta be honest with you, that I can't do that, Commander. One game of Commander a month would be, that cuts into my leisure time in like a huge way. No, I haven't talked to any of them since 2017. Hope they're doing okay. Sire, my bit rate. Um, excuse me, Sire, my win rate.
They're into Bitcoin now? Bro, it's magic. They were probably into Bitcoin then. I don't know why you're lulling. That's it's not a joke. <laughs> How do you think they afforded those sweet decks, man? Bit rate's actually looking good. Here, let me I'll, I'll move away from some of the some of the monsters here. Is that a little better? Joke's on you, I'm playing chess with Mark Zuckerberg in Decentraland right now. Dude, it's it's so funny. You know what's crazy? Again, this is all secondhand um, information. But I was listening to a podcast, they went over the Facebook uh, earnings results that just came out for the third quarter. And uh, I didn't realize this, but not only did... Meta spend like twenty billion dollars on their uh, Reality Labs Metaverse now with real legs uh, projects in the third quarter. They said in fourth quarter and through 2023, we actually expect that expenditure to grow. And then um, Mark Zuckerberg said something, and, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he said something along the lines of, "It hasn't really provided any top line revenue growth, but yeah, I don't know." That's not the kind of thing you like, want to hear as an investor, man. I mean, I get that you can't just get on the call and, like, lie, but you can put some finesse on it or something. Help me. Help me. There's a chest in here somewhere. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. Dude, what are you I saw it. Where did it go? I mean, there's only like 25 credits in it or a floor chicken, but still. Oh, there! I, I saw I saw an arrow in there. I can't see shit. <laughs> I mean, li listen, I don't have um, I don't have any bitrate problems like on my on my video capture. It's only through the stream, and even I can't see shit. Okay. Oh no, I'm gonna die. I need to stand inside of my sand. I'm dead! I'm fucking dead! No, because I get to revive, and when I revive, I come back even stronger. Yeah. That's right. I need to stand in the Santa water. I need to stand in the... Purify yourself in the waters of Lake Minnetonka. Please. I see my water. Dude, we get to revive three times. Every revive is like five seconds. I think we're getting close to like a mathematically certain victory. Please don't let that be like ironic. To do it using zero revives would feel amazing though. Ooh, you fuck you drag you little bitch. Ooh. Didn't even have to use. Look, and cash in leftover later revives for an extra 600 gold. I guess I could just revive on his ass, but I don't know. Give me the money, man. Unlock Demario. Isn't that one of the guys from uh, O-Town or, or making the band? Do the Mario swing your arms from side to side. Okay, I will turn off damage numbers. First off, we're going to pay the believers. We're going to slash marker vampire survivors one. 